Hello everyone, and welcome to a schematic tips and tricks video for Allegro System Capture. My name is Adam Fuchs. I am a product engineer for Cadence Design Systems. In this video, we're going to cover useful tips and tricks to make your work in system capture more efficient, and also how to make your schematic drawings more robust. Alrighty, for the first tip, let's talk about the aliasing of nets. So if you're not familiar with the alias symbol, it's actually normally found in the special symbols dialog towards the bottom, and it looks like this. What it allows you to do is to alias the name of a net so that it can have multiple net names depending on where it's being viewed. This can be especially useful when you're working with a larger design where, for example, you might want a signal to be called, in this case, ADC4, when it's being connected from the controller, but maybe when it's closer to a connector and you know one of your engineers needs to later look at that schematic and look at that connector, what signal that is, uh, maybe you want to have a more, a real world name. So what we're gonna look at is an example where I have uh, this ADC4 net. This is going to a three pin connector. Uh, this is actually the left trigger of the wireless gamepad controller schematic. And if I click on it, in my navigation panel on the left side here, I can see where it's connected. I'm gonna to jump to the controller page and you can see that the controller here, this LPC5528 pin A6 is an ADC pin and it makes sense to name that net ADC4. However, maybe I also want to include an alias for this net name just to make maybe future designers lives a little easier if they're inspecting what is the signal coming out of this connector. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and move this off page connector out by a little bit. And then I can either you know, drag and drop this alias, which I just grabbed from the special symbols, or I can also grab it again, click and place it in here. I'm gonna delete this little note that I left here. This was just for myself, temporary. And if I move these out a little more, You'll notice that if I click on this net, it's called ADC4. And then this net here actually has a separate name called ADC4X. The physical net name is still ADC4. So that means whether this is part of the same connection, if these were shorted together with a wire or not, these are both still technically part of the same physical net called ADC4. What that means is I can take this net here and rename it to something like left trigger. And let's go ahead and enable that visibility. And now if someone is inspecting the schematic, they can see that, aha, this net is actually for the left trigger. And if they are looking at the, at the controller page, they can still see that it's called ADC4. And again, you can use this navigation on the left side to inspect the different aliases for a signal. So here we can see that the net called ADC4, again, this is the physical net, is called ADC4 on pages four and eight, and it's called left trigger on page eight. And this alias symbol allows us to basically make these two equivalent. One last thing I wanna talk about with regards to aliases is that there's a very useful function in system capture called the physical net name view. If you go into view physical net name, what that does is it takes whatever aliases are on a schematic and changes their display to the physical net name, which you can use maybe for printing out a schematic version for review, just to make sure that no one's confused. Or if you prefer to work in that way, maybe someone else used an alias in their design, you can use this physical net name or PNN mode to not have that ambiguity. Okay, we're going to look at how to use or how to take advantage of the feature in System Capture to draw pin stubs, as well as quick renaming for multiple nets. So pin stubs is basically, or drawing pin stubs is a quick way to draw a small wire section that comes out of a pin. And then the name of that wire can be determined, well, depending on which option you select. If I select this component here, I have J15 and I do a right click I can select the draw stubs option, and then I have an option of selecting set prefix, set suffix, same as pin name, or system generated. 
for now, I'm just going to use same as pin name to, to show how it works, but we can always undo that and use, for example, system generated. Again, if I select same as pin name here, you can see that the pin name is one. And so it assigned the net name one to this net here. Let's go ahead and delete that. Likewise, if I add a suffix, I can say underscore J15. And now we have one underscore J15, two underscore J15, and so on. Depending on how you name your nets, this can be useful for ICs. For connectors like this one, for example, what I usually recommend is using the system generated option. And what that means is you'll get a system generated net name, which is usually an underscore N followed by a number. And that makes it very easy to then rename these nets. Now for renaming, we can either select each of these nets and manually type in the name, or we can take advantage of the rename feature in System Capture. So let's take an example where maybe an engineer gave us a spreadsheet that said, hey, I need these signals to come out of the J15 connector. Can you go ahead and name them as so on the, on the 11 pins on that connector? So here's my spreadsheet. Here I have pin one is zero or the ground net. And then some signal nets here, we have some LEDs, start, stop, etc. Now what I can do is I can actually copy these and using the rename feature, paste all those net names. So if I select all these pin stubs, which I just drew from this component, I can do a right click, rename. And if you're unsure which net is going to be renamed. In general, it takes the first net being the one at the top and then goes in descending order again in their location on the schematic. So as I start to paste, these will go from top to bottom. So let's take that spreadsheet again and just copy these nets, control C. And in this form, do a control V, control V, press OK. And now we can see that all of these net names got properly assigned. Now for something like the zero net, this is a ground net. So we can go ahead and add a special symbol to that. Let's just move this net a little bit. And then for these, I'm just going to make these wires a little longer and then I can select all of these signals and using my arrow keys on the keyboard, neatly arrange these. Or alternatively, um, if I move one of these to a location that I'm happy with, I can use the, the signal name selector here, select all of these and then use my arrangement options in the properties to arrange these all neatly in the line. One last thing we want to do here is just add some off page connectors, because if I inspect these nets and go to navigation, you'll see that uh, these actually go between a couple different pages. So simply select these nets, right click, add special, and we're going to use the IO. Or actually, I believe these are, yep, let's use IO in this case. So now these all have an IO special symbol. And then just for just for completeness, we can then add our navigation links. And here we can see the links to the different locations on our schematic where the, for example, AP115 signal goes. So page four, location B3. The third tip we're gonna talk about is use of the find and replace function in system capture. So find and replace is under edit, find and replace. And what it allows us to do is basically replace things like components, nets, even properties on certain components. And this can be done in different scopes. So it can be done to an entire project. It can be done to uh, maybe just a single page in your project or even just a single block. But what the important thing is that we need to be aware of, you know, where those changes are going to be made before we commit to them. So for this example, I have a block here called test block. And I've placed a connector here called J15 and a bunch of signals called ADC, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 
Now what we want to do is actually rename these from ADC1, ADC2, and so on to, for example, FPGA1, FPGA2, etc. Now if we use the normal find and replace command, what we can do is type in ADC because we want to find the text string called ADC and we want to replace that with FPGA. Now if I were to click replace, that would rename these as I had mentioned before from ADC1 to FPGA1 and so on. However, we need to be aware of our scope. If I click advanced here, we can see that currently our scope is set to the entire design. What that means is we'll look for nets called ADC something in the entire design and then rename it to FPGA. If you think back to the previous examples, we actually had a couple signals called ADC 12 and there was an ADC 4 as well. And we want to make sure that those do not get renamed. The nice thing about the find and modify or find and replace feature in system capture is you'll notice that there's an option here for find as well as replace. If we just click find, what that will do is fill our search results with all the objects which the find and replace command would interact with if we were to click replace. What you'll notice is there's a couple wires, for example, this ADC4 on the controller page, which it thinks it wants to replace, but we don't want that. So let's go back to this block. And before we run the find and replace, let's set our scope to just this block or page. select the current page. That's what we want to do. Okay, so now we know that we're going to be working in this block on this current page and let's click the find button and we can see that only the ADC signals which are on the test block and on page one of test block are going to be modified. So if we click replace, say yes, we now see that all of our signals got replaced by the, replace the ADC name with FPGA. And just to be sure, let's go back to the controller page and we can see that this ADC net is still, well, it still has retained its ADC name. So you can use the find and replace feature for not just renaming nets, you can use it to replace components in your design. And again, be aware of how you set the scope just to make sure that you're uh, interacting with only the objects which you want to change. Let's talk about using the notes and also custom variables in System Capture. Now, custom variables can be accessed for your project by going into Edit, Preferences, and then in the System section, look for the Custom Variables menu. In here, there is quite a few predefined variables, and these are all variables that System Capture generates when you start your project and it also automatically updates them as well. So for example, the last modified variable will update whenever you save your project and things like the project name, these are set when you create your project as well as you know total pages gets automatically updated as you are working throughout your design. Now we can also add our own custom variables and you can see that I've already added a few here. And the way that you can tell the difference is the system generated ones cannot be deleted. So if I hover over them, there's no X. And also the system generated ones are gray while the user generated custom variables are in white. To add a variable simply at the bottom, you can add a variable name. So for example, variable, and then set a value to 14, for example, and hit okay. Now you might be thinking, how do I actually use that information on my schematic, right? If I print this out as a PDF, how can someone use that information? If you know they can't go into edit preferences for system capture when looking at maybe a printed version of this. The good thing is when drawing notes on a schematic, we can reference those custom variables and display them uh, with whatever their active value is. So if we add a note, 
Let's go ahead and zoom in here. This is the cover page for my design. I can add a note here and using the let's zoom in. If I start a, a part of the text with a dollar sign, I can then use any of the variables available to me and then use that value to display on my schematic. So earlier we created this variable, variable, <laughs> for lack of a better name. And if I click on this, it'll add in that dollar sign. And if I click away to finish drawing my note, if you remember, I set the value to 14, it's now taken on that value 14 from my custom variables. If I go into custom variables again, and I update this value to hello world, click OK the value is automatically updated as well. Let's go ahead and delete that. So one question you might be thinking, well, how can that be useful? There's a lot of different ways that this is used throughout my design. For example, one of the ways that I use it is uh, I set things like the designer name, the scale of a design, the revision, and use those in my title block. So these are automatically updated whenever I create a new project. Likewise, I have the variant name in the top right corner. Right now it's set to base. But if I were to create a new variant, you'll notice that there's a option in the form where you can set a value for any of your custom variables, the user defined custom variables that are only specific to that variant. So if you make a variant, maybe for European manufacturers, I can set the variant name value from base to Euro for example, and call this variant European in European manufacturing. And while we're in that variant view, again, variants a little bit out of the scope of this video, but you'll notice that that value also changes. Another example is we can add a note. For example, here I have a revision history. I can add a new note, and I'm gonna just call this the active revision. Let's make sure that these are lined up because I like everything to be neatly lined up. And I'm going to go ahead and call this active revision, put a colon. And the cool thing is, is that if I use the dollar sign, I can actually use the value of a custom variable as part of a larger string. So it doesn't just have to be the name of that variable on a note. It can be part of a larger sentence or, or you know, combination of variables, whatever it might be. So I'm going to reference a variable called active underscore revision. And we're just going to make this a little longer so it doesn't clip to the next to the next line. Now I currently don't have a variable called active revision. So let's go ahead and add that. We can delete this test variable we created earlier. And let's add our active revision and set that revision to a dash b0.4 and this is just for the sake of example obviously you can set your revision naming however you need click ok and it automatically takes on that name so be sure to use custom variables wherever you need repeated information within your schematic or you need to be able to set things up so that can be quickly changed in multiple locations on your schematic rather than having to rewrite it every time.